Hello, everybody. I'm Jacqueline Whitmore. I'm the founder and director of the Protocol School of Palm Beach. I'm an international etiquette expert, and I am so delighted to be with you again for our new season of uh, my LinkedIn Live and Facebook Live shows. I started doing them last year during the pandemic, and I took a hiatus during the summer, and I didn't realize how many people actually enjoyed my uh, live programs. So I decided I would bring them back, and I'm super excited to share one of my um, favorite people of all time. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about her in just a minute. But before I do that, I want to say that I have established a theme for the upcoming programs. And my theme is creating an elegant life. And how can we as a society create a more elegant life, whether that's emotionally, physically, spiritually, business-wise, all of the above. And so my guest today is going to help us by sharing her expertise in a very specific area. Um, her name is Scarlett Fitzgerald, and she is a sensuality and self-love coach. And I'll ask her all about that when she comes on. Scarlett is passionate about the power of a healthy self-image. She teaches, coaches, and empowers overworked, overgiving, and overwhelmed women to find their way back to their inner truth. But don't be deceived. This program is for men too. So if you're a male and you're watching, stay with us because she's going to be talking to you as well. In a world that expects women and men to be everything to everyone, Scarlet guides the calling of their souls to awaken to their full and true divine feminine potential, where they can find self-acceptance, self-confidence, and self-love. Prior to Scarlet's journey of self-healing, which led her to her coaching work, she worked in the realm of building self-confidence through image and personal style. And that's exactly where I met her. I met her at a conference many years ago. It was the AICI, Association of Image Consultants International. And she and I hit it off. And she later became one of my etiquette consultant, train the trainer students. And she graduated from my program, I want to say back in 2016. So in 2012, she founded the School of Fabulous to help women feel empowered, authentic, and confident through their self-expression in style, body language, and personal brand essence. So please help me welcome our guest, Scarlett Fitzgerald. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. Well, let's just dig right in. What is a sensuality and self-love coach? All right. So a sensuality coach um, is not a sexuality coach. And I'm going to explain the difference. A lot of people think that they're one and the same and they aren't. And the simple explanation that I like to give of what a sensuality coach is, is someone who helps people, I won't say women, I primarily work with women, but I'll say people, uh, someone who helps people get in touch with their senses and use their senses to be grounded in the moment. So all sensuality is in my world is your ability to be present in the moment through your senses. That's really interesting. Now, today's topic is tapping into your feminine power. Mm -hmm. And we're going to dive pretty deep into that. But first of all, I want people to hear about your journey and why you became interested in this topic. And what led you from going to um, become, I mean, you were, you still are a professional, you, you still have um, 
you do a lot of teaching, you still do the image consulting, but this is your love. This is something that really lights your fire. So how, what? tell us a little bit about your journey and your journey to self-healing. Absolutely. So as you had mentioned, in 2012, I started my image consultancy because I loved the power of helping people transform. And I really my favorite part of doing image consulting was always the part where I saw the women see themselves for the first time the way that they've always wanted to see themselves. So that moment in the dressing room when they put something on that really felt the line that really felt like them and a reflection of them. That was the moment that I was always waiting for. And I realized that for me, image consulting ran so much deeper than style, fashion or, or any of that. It really went to the, the, the truth of somebody's soul being expressed on the outside. And that's what made me fall in love with the deeper work. Now, at that time, I was still um, very far away from my own healing journey. And it took me several years to get to a point where I needed to, um, to do some inner work myself. So um, I basically had created a life that I thought I was supposed to. I did all the right things that society told me I needed to do to be successful. So, uh, you know, the, the white picket fence in the suburbs, the job with the benefits, you know, all of those things I achieved. And I realized that I was still deeply unhappy and unfulfilled. And I felt very guilty about that, of course, because I had achieved all the things that I thought I wanted. And so that really began my own healing journey. And so as I started working with coaches, life coaches myself, reading lots of books and, and um, questioning, why am I so unhappy and what can I do about this? That's when everything started to shift for me and completely change the course of how I live my life. Well, what was that defining moment where you said enough is enough? I mean, you were a, a wife, a mother, a sister, a daughter, a friend. And you're right. You did all the things that we're taught to do. You, I mean, you've got a master's degree in business administration. You graduated the top of your class at Georgetown University. You speak three languages. I mean, you're an extremely accomplished woman. And you, it, it, it to, to the outside world looking in, you had it all going on. But inside, what I hear you saying is that there was, there, there was a bit of a, maybe I'm not using the right word, suffering a little bit. I mean, you use the word, you use the term unhappiness, but I think it, it was probably deeper than that. And what was the defining moment where you thought enough is enough? I have to make some changes in my life. Yes. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. It, it, um, it felt, I felt so ungrateful and that created a lot of suffering as well because I, I did have everything on paper. I had it all. I had everything. So how could I be so ungrateful as to feel uh, unfulfilled or, or unhappy? Um, so I needed to go deeper and, and realize that. And the, the moment that I really knew that life could be different was when I returned to dance. And so, you know, we'll talk more about um, how to step into our feminine power and, and realize that there is another way to live. Uh, that was my moment when I when I danced, I was in the moment, I was in my body, I felt connected, aligned to who I was. And I realized that there has to be another way. I felt that way in dance and I didn't feel that way anywhere else in my life. And so I needed to figure out what that disconnect was and how to gap, uh, how to bridge that gap. So um, I, I worked with a life coach. I hired a life coach, went on a life changing retreat to Italy. And that that was the turning point when everything shifted for me. Wow. Um, we had to go halfway around the world to find a mind <laughs> shift. So I want to talk about the, the feminine energy that you're you're speaking about, that feminine power and especially um, with 
a women, but also men have this feminine power too. And you and I have talked about it, but let's just talk about for women right now. When do you think women are the least in touch with their feminine power? Maybe you can tell us what the masculine power is and what the feminine power is so that the, the audience can understand it a little bit better. Yes, absolutely. And I think um, it's really important to define these things so that it's clear what we're talking about. When I talk about feminine and masculine energies, um, we are really talking about the yin and yang of a well-balanced life. So yang qualities, uh, which are the ma more masculine qualities, are things like doing, achieving, uh, going towards a result, thinking, um, directing. They're, they're very um, goal-oriented, achievement-oriented things. Those are the masculine qualities. Feminine energies include things like receiving, allowing, trusting, feeling. It's the process of things. So it's a, it's a more um, lean back energy. It's a more receiving energy. And it's just a very different feeling in your body when you experience these different energies. So what has happened in our society at least you know over, over the last hundreds of years that we've we've been operating in this way is only masculine qualities are celebrated in our society so we have to be achievement oriented we have to you know hustle in order to succeed whether it's in our business or in our life the more busy we are the more we're proud of ourselves so it's constantly uh doing 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 things to get to some point where we'll be happy and we never get to that point because there's always more things to do as opposed to taking a moment sitting back um, and allowing and listening and receiving messages from our truth that lives in our body to actually know what it is that we do want and how we can find happiness within ourselves well last year it and i'm sure you'll agree was just a big blur I mean, we've been um, in such uh, turmoil emotionally, physically, ec uh, <clears throat> ecologically, um, you name it, with everything from the civil unrest to social unrest to the, the climate crisis, political unrest, and um, not to mention the, the big health crisis that we are in right now it seems to be more difficult to tap into the feeling, the giving, the receiving, because we're in survival mode. Absolutely. But is there a way to slow down and capture that when, um, when we're in such a, a, a state of, I guess, turmoil? I heard someone say not too long ago in an interview that um, when you're in um, when you're experiencing turmoil, it accelerates everything. So if there's already um, unhappiness or unrest around you, it accelerates it, it exacerbates it. So how can you tap into the feminine energy and, um, and, I don't know what I'm really trying to say, but is there... A, can you do it during these times? Absolutely, absolutely. So when we are in in our masculine energy mode, mm -hmm. which is what society teaches us to be from the time we're, we're little. For boys, it's, you know, always be achieving, doing, uh, being the caretaker. Don't be in touch with your feelings. Don't, you know, don't cry, right? Mm -hmm. We tell our boys not to have that feminine energy. Uh, inside of themselves or to be in touch with it. We tell women the same thing, women who want to be successful in their field, you know, we tell them to, to match the men, right? To go, go, go all the time. So we learn from, from an early age to be in our heads, right? So we spend all of our time thinking and then doing. We don't spend any time being and feeling. 
So that's the key. Those those two things are the key to stepping into our feminine energy more is being and feeling. So I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more. But I just want to say um, the key to it is to connect back to our bodies. So when you say we are surviving and not thriving, that's because we spend most of our time up here in our heads. We're either thinking about past events that happened and you know suffering about them, um, or, or we are thinking about the future and worrying and anxiety and all of those things. We're in the future. We don't actually spend any time in the present moment. And that is the key to being in your feminine energy. So when we're in the present moment and we're being and we're feeling our bodies, remember what I said about sensuality, mm -hmm. we're using our senses to be in the moment. That's when we are in touch with our feminine energy. That's where we get into alignment between here and here. Mm -hmm. When we're in alignment uh, with our bodies, then we feel um, we feel authentically ourselves. Then we feel like we're not suppressing whatever it is that, that our soul actually wants. Our intuition, soul, truth, whatever you want to call it, lives in our body. Up here is uh, what I call the inner critic. It's all the collective voices that we have acquired through our lifetimes uh, from society, from parents, from politics, from television that tell us all these different things. And we're constantly just, just living up there. Mm -hmm. um, but it, when we listen to ourselves, to our truth that lives here, that's when we can get into alignment and everything changes. So how do you... Um how do you learn to do that? Because it's easier said than done, I think. And you're a mom. Uh, your uh, son is getting ready to become a teenager. You manage a household uh, alone, by the way. Um, and you have a full-time career, actually a couple of full-time careers. So how can you teach others to tap into um, their feminine power. Absolutely. So I always thought that, you know, it has to take a lot of time or, you know, when people say like, you have to find time to meditate or, or journal or do any of these things that it has to take a lot of time. It doesn't, but it does take commitment, commitment to yourself. So that's part of, you know, the self love piece that I work with my clients on is giving yourself that commitment to give yourself something back, to give yourself some time, to not put yourself last on the list. Because as, as women, we tend to do that, right? Put everybody, everybody and everything first on the list of priorities. So part of self-love is giving yourself permission to actually lift yourself up into number one priority. Um, and that's hard for a lot of women to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the easiest thing to do, the simplest thing to do really is just giving yourself, let's say five minutes a day. I mean, it really can be just that simple of quiet and of sitting with your feelings. And it is harder to do than we think, because when we sit in the quietness, we start to we start to hear the truth and we start to hear some of our own darkness and we start to feel some of the things that our intuition has been telling us that we don't want to deal with. So it's much easier to tune it out and go turn on Netflix or, you know, call a friend and gossip or do something else to distract ourselves from ourselves. So the key is to get quiet. That's really the first and best step. Get quiet and listen. Listen to what your intuition is telling you. So how can we ensure we're operating from our feminine energy? It, I mean, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I just spoke with a, a girlfriend yesterday and uh, she's the mother of two young boys. Um, they're not quite teenagers yet. And she has a full time career. She runs around with the boys because they have their activities. And, and of mm -hmm. course, they're they're in everything, all sports and the, and school. And then there's managing the house and then um, everything else that goes on with aging parents and so forth. 
And she told me yesterday that her marriage of 20 years is dissolving. And, um, and I don't know if you want to address this in terms of, um, let's just face it, we're living busy lives. This woman is not unlike millions of other women out there who are juggling plates and boulders and balls and <laughs> doing cartwheels at the same time. And um, yet I think that we, um, you know, oftentimes we sacrifice ourselves to make others happy. So can you address that? Yes. Yes. Um, and that that is one of my specialties, helping uh, people pleasers, because that's who I was. We always are the best at helping uh, other people who were like us. And we've gone through the through the journey and I'm still on the journey. So it's not like we ever arrive at a place like I got this all figured out. Like, no, that's not how it works. So this is something that I have to also do um, on the journey. So it's hard. It's very hard to make that time to give ourselves permission. So that's one of the first things that I work with my clients on is helping them give themselves permission to do this work, to give to themselves. And once they do of actually committing to doing some of these things, some of these, I call them rituals. I don't like the term uh, routine because that that doesn't feel uh, as sexy to me. So uh, a ritual is something sacred that you do for yourself to help yourself uh, live live a better, happier, more aligned life. So it, even though it's hard to find the time, we can, we all can find five, 10 minutes. It, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, it can be as simple as listening to a five minute meditation right before bed or first thing in the morning, if, if that's your better time to do it. It can really be very simple. It's just giving yourself the space to go within, to listen and go within and listen to yourself and tune out the rest of the world. So you can start feeling connected to, to hear, to everything that's happening for you inside of yourself. Those are the first steps to actually being in your feminine power when you're connected, when you're aligned, when you learn that you don't need validation from anybody else, that everything that you need is inside of yourself. These are things that we're learning on that path. But the first steps to it are to start small, even if it's five minutes a day, and give yourself permission to do that. And to, to do that, it can be quite simple. Um, you can meditate for five minutes, you can go for a walk, you can make your morning coffee and drink it on the balcony or on your patio without scrolling through Facebook, right? Without tuning yeah. out, uh -huh. just sitting there with your cup and, and just being with yourself, right? Being and feeling. So there's the being part of, of, the, of the ritual and then feeling. So if you're eating, then just eat. Don't turn the TV on, just eat and focus on all of the textures and all of the tastes that are happening in your mouth at that moment. Um, if you are listening to music, close your eyes and really listen, listen for all the instruments, listen to the melody, like really be present for what you're doing. That's, that's what sensuality is, is enjoying every single sense in the moment for what it is and appreciating it. And that's, that's what allows you to be present. This is what I learned why in dance, I could feel myself. It, because in dance as a follow, um, so this is primarily for, for ladies, but some men follow as well. As a follow, you have to completely relax and be in your body because you have to follow the lead. And so as you're doing that, you completely get out of your head and you're in your body watching for, you know, feeling, sensing any change in direction, any movement. And that is why when I allowed myself to get out of my own head, I started to hear myself because it was like an active meditation, really, in effect. Um, 
of being of being connected to so, to my source of myself, which is here. Well, you mentioned a very good um, example of dance because you have to all you have to trust your partner, mm -hmm. and it goes into um, feeling. And, and anticipating what's going to happen next and going with the flow, I call it. And um, when you talked about meditation, I'm not a person who meditates. I would imagine there are a lot of people who watch this video who say, well, I, I don't meditate. I'm never going to meditate. Um, but you, you have other examples like taking your coffee in the morning and instead of sitting there with your phone in one hand and your coffee in the other, you're actually taking five minutes to yourself and mm -hmm. going outside or out on the front porch and you're listening to the birds, you're enjoying the aroma of the coffee, you're actually using your senses. Mm -hmm. And that's what a sensuality coach is, is, is tapping into helping people tap into their senses. And as far as these things go. You mentioned meditation. You don't have to do it for 10 minutes or 30 minutes a day. Maybe you just do it for one minute. Absolutely. These are, I call these snackable moments. And, and I love <laughs> little snackable moments. And um, you start out really small and, mm -hmm. and that's, then you build on that. And that Absolutely. therefore you don't beat yourself up for yeah not giving yourself the time. Yes, I will fully admit I was one of those people who I don't meditate. I, I, would, I would always say I don't meditate. I can't meditate. I can't clear my head. But that's the problem, right? Is that we, we can't clear our head. There is no perfect way to meditate. Um, and I know people say that, but it's really, really true. So for me, the thing that really helped me do it um, better or to understand the, the benefit of it is uh, a facilitator or guided meditation. So there is an app called Insight Timer, and they have thousands of different meditations for, for different topics. And I find that to be very helpful. As somebody is guiding, then I can really focus in on what they're saying so I'm not in my own head. So quiet meditations are harder. Uh, when they're guided, then you can fo focus on what they're saying and actually uh, guide yourself into being in your body. But if, you, if you're not ready for that, or if you don't want to do that, then simple breathing, that is really the, the number one thing that can snap you out of the, oh my gosh, anxiety up in the head feeling to, okay, let me ground myself and just take a couple of deep breaths. Three deep breaths will completely shift your, your state of being. Well, there's an... Um... I wear a Fitbit most of the time and they have an app that if you buy um, a premium membership, you can get all of these wonderful meditations. And I listen to a meditation in the evening as I'm going to bed. It's a relaxation meditation and it really does help. And I love it. And um, so I guess I am tapping into my feminine power, aren't I? Absolutely. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Um, I want to ask you, um, we're, we're just about out of time and we can talk so um, much more on this, but I want to ask you on your journey and if anybody out there is interested in becoming a sensuality or self-love coach, um, where do they go to learn how to do this and where, where did you go and what kind of books influenced your thinking in this arena? Mm -hmm. um, so as I mentioned, um, I worked with a life coach. Her name is Kate Harlow. She's incredible. Um, and she really showed me and taught me um, how the inner critic influences our lives and how we can find our truth. So, so there's that whole piece of it. Um, but for me, as I mentioned, you know, I, I loved being trained in image consulting. I really loved this idea of, of a woman really seeing herself reflected in the mirror, the way that she imagines herself on the inside or the way that she's always wanted to feel. Um, and so that that was just a journey um, of my own personal experience and uh, and my interest in image consulting and helping women feel beautiful and feel sexy and feel sensual um, so that they can appreciate themselves. 
so some of the books, I'll, I'll share some of the books. I have them right here. Um, one really huge one that I use in my coaching is uh, Learning to Love Yourself by Gay Hendricks. It's an amazing resource and just so wonderfully kind um, and a way to really understand who you are. Um, another one is The Wild Woman's Way by Michaela Bohm. Um, she is, if you've seen Sex, Love and Goop on Netflix, she is, uh, she's the lady that talks to um, Gwyneth Paltrow mostly uh, as the co-host. Um, and then another really, really influential book is this one by Regina Tamashauer, um, Mama Gina. She's based in New York and she is really an incredible facilitator of feminine power, empowerment, um, and really using our feminine energy to, to live an amazing life. So these are some of my personal um, influences. And then it was just my personal experience um, through dance, through everything I learned there, um, through image consulting and kind of putting it all together uh, into a very specialized and special way to coach, uh, to coach women to step powerfully into their truth, uh, unapologetically uh, claim they're sexy to really, um, really claim, claim who they are in the world without society tell them, telling them what they should and shouldn't be. So that's, that's been my journey. And you have a mastermind program that um, you host several times a year. It's called the Sensual Alignment Program. Mm -hmm. And just briefly tell us a little bit about that. Yes, thank you. Um, so it's a six month group program. I take a small group of women. It's very hands on. We meet very often and um, it goes through three phases. The first phase is kind of about your relationship with yourself. So that is learning uh, who your inner critic is, who your truth is. I call I call that the, our inner siren. Um, learning boundaries, learning you know to take care of our inner children, um, and then we go into our relationship with others. So that's intimacy, communication, sensuality, sexuality, all those pieces. And then the third piece of that is the embodiment, which is where I bring in my image consulting training and I help my sirens align what everything that they've learned about themselves on the inside and show that portray that on the outside so that they feel like they're really walking in the world um, in their truth so it's a six month program and it's amazing and uh it's 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 what i love to do in this world i know it's what you love to do and and you have found your passion and your purpose and i'm so glad that you can marry the image consulting with the uh, self-love coaching and that it all fits nicely together and people can find you where so my website is scarletsirens.com and i'm uh, at scarlet sirens on social media and i do have a free facebook group called scarlet sirens the sensual sisterhood um, and yeah you can find me there reach out to me i'm happy to get on a call or answer any questions um, and the the next group of women will be uh, starting in February of 2022. And I truly believe that tapping into your feminine energy is part of creating a more elegant life. So Absolutely. Scarlett, it was so great to have you on today's show and, and to be the first one to kick off the new season and um, especially now that we're approaching the holidays. I think we really need this more than ever because we're just go, go, go all the time. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and for all, uh, for everybody listening, whether women or men, you know, find the five minutes in a day, even if it's in the shower, to just be with your own thoughts and just listen. Just listen. That's great. We'll end with that. So I uh, want to thank uh, Scarlett for coming on and um, being my guest today. And I hope that you will visit her website, which is scarletsirens.com, and you'll check out her, uh, her mastermind program and um, just send her an email, let her know what you think, and also connect with her on social media. She's uh, very active on 
uh, Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and all of those uh, wonderful platforms. So thanks so much for being with me today, everyone. And you have a great week. And I will see you next week with uh, another great guest. Thanks so much.